What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we are talking about creatine and the brain. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. We have known for a long time that creatine is awesome for muscle. It's not a steroid, it's not gonna blow you up, it's not gonna turn you into Arnold Schwarzenegger, but we do know that it consistently improves lean mass, strength, and performance when it comes to resistance exercise and even possibly some endurance forms of exercise or high intensity exercise as well. So a myriad of benefits for the physical. But what we've been finding out recently is that creatine actually may have a lot of cognitive benefits. We have seen improvements in depression with some studies. We've seen improvements in cognitive function. But with creatine, we know that with, for example, the muscle building or performance benefits, that those are things that you have to basically take creatine over time. You have to saturate your muscle cells with creatine. That increases your phosphocreatine stores in your muscle, and that's what gives you the benefits for lean mass, strength, and performance with creatine. Acutely taking creatine one time isn't going to improve those things. It happens from taking it for weeks, getting those muscle cells saturated, and then you reap the benefits from it. So a recent study wanted to address whether the cognitive benefits could be achieved in a single dose. And so these researchers looked at sleep depriving people for 21 hours and then ran them through a battery of testing in terms of testing different metabolites in the brain as well as looking at pH in some of the areas of the brain and looking at a battery of cognitive tests. So basically having them do tests that looked at how well they were functioning cognitively under sleep deprivation. So they had them sleep deprived, I think it was for 21 hours. They gave them 0.35 grams of creatine per kilogram, a one-time dose. And they gave them this, I believe like three or four hours before they started these tests. And so that dosage of creatine for someone like me equates to just over 30 grams of creatine at a sitting. Now, a normal dose that I would take over time to saturate my muscle cells would be five grams per day. That would saturate my muscle cells and that would give me the benefits from creatine. So 30 grams per day or 30 grams at a dose is a very high dose of creatine. But in this study, it appeared to make a difference. Now again, it's just one study, so I don't wanna overreact based on this one study, but they saw that creatine prevented the drop or the changes in some of these metabolites in the brain. It prevented the drop in pH in the brain that was, I guess, seen with sleep deprivation. I am not a brain expert and I'm not a sleep expert, but just looking at the data that they looked at, it appeared to basically attenuate some of these negative effects of sleep deprivation. Now, it didn't completely offset them. I'm not saying that you can just not sleep or sleep very little, take creatine, and your cognitive function will be completely restored. That's not what I think the researchers are saying. That's not what this study says. But I think the takeaway from this is that at least a high dosage of creatine may help attenuate losses in cognitive function from sleep deprivation. So who might this be useful for? Well, I mean, obviously if you've pulled an all-nighter, which I don't recommend studying for a test, but if you did, high dose of creatine may help with that. If you are perhaps very stressed out or you haven't been sleeping as well and you've got something that requires you to be you know, cognitively active, perhaps a high dose of creatine might help. If you've already been taking creatine consistently, do I think it would have the same effects? I don't know. It's impossible to really know the answer to that question because although we know that five grams saturates the muscle cells and leads to these performance and lean mass benefits, we don't really know if that same saturation level exists for the central nervous system in the brain. So we do know that the blood-brain barrier is very picky with keeping things out. So perhaps the level of saturation is higher or the dosage that's needed to saturate brain cells may be higher than in muscle cells, but we don't know that for sure. And I'm just completely speculating when it comes to that. But I think what we can pretty confidently say at this point is creatine not only appears to have benefits for lean mass, strength, recovery, performance, but it also appears to positively impact 
Cognition. People ask me, what supplements do I need to take? Well, by their very nature, you don't need to take any supplements, hence the name supplement. You can live just fine without it. But I will say, I think there's a difficult argument against taking creatine at this point for a few different reasons. The first one is it's relatively low cost, especially if you're taking creatine monohydrate, which by the way, if you're paying for any other form of creatine, you're being scammed. Like for example, creatine ethyl ester was popular like 15, 10, 15 years ago. I'm sure they'll bring it back around at some point again because that's what tends to happen. But it's, it was actually shown to be less bioavailable than creatine monohydrate. Buffered creatine, pH balanced creatine. Creatine is stable in stomach acid. You don't need to buffer it. And the research studies on buffered creatine versus regular plain old creatine monohydrate show the same benefits. So if you like paying three, four times as much for your creatine, you can buy buffered creatine. And then people say, well, what about creatine hydrochloride? Creatine hydrochloride is more soluble. It's easier to mix. Some people have postulated that maybe you can take a smaller dose and get the same benefits. Maybe, but again, per effective dose, it's still more expensive than monohydrate. The only time I could see maybe something like hydrochloride being a better option than monohydrate is if you're somebody who's very GI sensitive to creatine. Creatine can be a gut irritant. And so they did say in this study that nobody had GI side effects. So I, I think part of that boils down to the solubility and make sure you're mixing it in enough water. I would recommend making sure that you're getting micronized creatine monohydrate. I, I think that that can help make a difference in terms of the solubility of creatine. But spending a bunch of extra money on creatine just doesn't make sense. So creatine monohydrate, micronized creatine monohydrate, especially if you've got GI issues. And also, if you're somebody with GI issues, perhaps splitting up the dose throughout the day. So instead of taking one five gram dose, you know, you're taking multiple two and a half gram doses or even like multiple one to two gram doses might help with any GI discomfort. But when it comes to safety, effectiveness for cost, there is no supplement that beats creatine. There's no supplement that beats creatine monohydrate. It's been around for 40 years now and it's very safe. It appears to be quite effective consistently. Now, some people have said, well, you could just eat a lot of red meat and get creatine from that. I mean, Paul Saladino said this on the Joe Rogan experience and I, I, I don't, uh, I guess it's just, he's probably just trying to push meat-based, but here's the problem. Uh, there's about one gram of creatine, I believe, per pound of meat. It might be a little bit more than that. It might be like 1.5. But when you cook the meat, it makes about half the creatine non-bioavailable. And you would need about like seven pounds of red meat per day to get enough creatine. That's way more expensive than just supplementing with it. Now, some people have said, well, I've taken creatine before. I didn't notice anything. One, creatine, it's not a steroid. It's not going to like just pile muscle on you. It's going to be a, a a consistent benefit, but it's a relatively small benefit. And so if you're training and, and nutrition's all over the place, you probably just aren't gonna notice it because it can get lost in the wash of your inconsistency. The other option is there are some creatine non-responders, they call it. But if you're a non-responder, it typically means that your phosphocreatine levels in your muscle are already saturated. And so supplementing isn't doing anything more. Although based on this study, it could be that you may actually still be getting some cognitive benefits from it. So creatine's awesome. Almost all the concerns around it have been put to rest. It's not hard on the kidneys. It's not hard on the liver. It doesn't increase the risk of any diseases. The one thing that people keep coming back to with creatine is, well, it causes hair loss, not based on the data we have. There is a single study in 2009 where they saw an increase in DHT with creatine supplementation. DHT is a metabolite of testosterone that has been associated with hair loss. They didn't actually measure hair loss in this study. This is a mechanistic study and it's never been repeated and they didn't show changes in any other sex hormone with creatine administration. So how is it you're having changes in DHT but no changes in any of the other metabolites? That would suggest that creatine is acting directly on one enzyme to increase the conversion of perhaps testosterone to DHT. We don't have evidence of that. And again, this study has never been repeated. And I feel quite strongly 
that if that was actually a real effect, we would have seen studies that had confirmed it, and we haven't thus far. Creatine appears to be safe, effective for performance, muscle, strength, and for cognition. If you like creatine, we do sell it in our Outwork Nutrition Recovery product. Creatine monohydrate, it's part of our overall recovery blend. We put five grams of creatine monohydrate in there and it will help you recover from your workouts faster. It's not magic, but it does help you recover faster, reduce the time period that you need to be totally recovered from a resistance training session so that you can go back in, train harder the next time, recover better. That's what our line is about facilitating your own hard training. Because no matter how great supplements are, no matter how great creatine is, it's not gonna do the work for you. You still gotta do the work. So if you're interested in Outwork Nutrition, our evidence-based line of scientifically backed supplements, you can click the link in the description and I'll catch you guys next week.